Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the next lecture in this series. This is lecture 402 on weak acids and bases. So in weak acids, remember, only a very small percentage of the acid molecules actually dissociate. And to show you what that looks like, I have a simulation here from PHET. And you can see if we have a solution here of a weak acid, uh, you'll see most of the mixture here, the equilibrium mixture, contains intact HA molecules. In fact, very few of them actually ionize and make hydronium ions and, and A1 minus ions. And you can see that. So that if I actually uh, increase the strength of the acid, you can see a few more hydronium ions appear. Now similarly, with uh, weak bases, a base being a proton acceptor, you can see that most of the mixture contains B. There aren't very many hydroxide ions and BH plus ions. So again, if I increase strength, I get a few more. But most, at equilibrium, most of the mixture contains the B and the water. And again, to go back to the acid, same idea here. So we can see in this weak acid, what would you predict the pH to be? Well, let's take a look. Well, yes, it's slightly acidic. So it's pH is below seven, minus log of the concentration of hydronium ions. Another way, uh, remind you here, here's just showing what the water molecules look like that I've kept shut off. So I encourage you certainly uh, to uh, go to PHET, uh, University of Colorado website, and play, play around with uh, these particular simulations. Uh, do you think it's going to conduct water? Let's take a look, or conduct electricity, sorry. Yes, it certainly will, because there's charged ions that are capable of conductance. So now to go back. So they're weak electrolytes. They conduct electricity a little bit, simply because of the formation of those positive and negative ions. <clears throat> So we can look at a dissociation of a weak acid in an equilibrium expression. Looks like this. Uh, note that weak acids normally are uh, determined by simply locating a hydrogen atom at the front of the equation. And this hydrogen atom, some of these molecules will donate to water. If we had 100 HA molecules, probably less than five would actually undergo this process. The, the remaining 95 would stay intact, and that's why it's a weak acid. As opposed to a strong acid, all of these HA particles would actually ionize if it were a strong acid. So there wouldn't be an equilibrium, it would simply go to completion, and you'd use up all of the HA molecules. So uh, as with all equilibria expressions, we can get the equilibrium constant. In this case, note we're calling it Ka, or uh, the A designates the fact it's an acid. It's the equilibrium constant for an acid. It's based on, again, the concentration of A minus times concentration of H3O plus divided by the concentration of HA. Uh, the concentration of H2O is considered to be a constant itself, so it is not included in the equilibrium expression. So notice, <clears throat> um, again, I've mentioned all that. Now, the larger the Ka value, the more the equilibrium shifts to the products. So in fact, if I start with 100 HA molecules, if the Ka gets larger, we would have more and more of them actually ionize. And that's, you can tell the relative strength of a, of a weak acid by looking at its Ka value. The larger the Ka value, the more it ionizes, the uh, lower the pH. So here is a list from a textbook showing you typical weak acids here. So you'll note as we go down, the Ka's get smaller. <laughs> the pKa's are the minus logs of the Ka's. You can see they go up as the uh, weak acids get weaker. So similarly for the list of bases, you can see again, uh, this is a, a small list of weak bases that we'll talk more about later, but they're proton acceptors. So waters donate 
a hydrogen to these molecules forming hydroxide ions. Whereas with weak acids, the, the molecules donate hydrogens to water making hydronium ions. The difference between weak acids and weak bases. So. <clears throat> now, what's interesting to note is that the strength of a base is inversely related to the strength of its conjugate acid. The weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. Now, let me remind you what a weak acid conjugate base partnership is. If we look at the first equilibrium here, the uh, HIO3 particle is donating a proton. It's regarded as an acid. The water is accepting that proton, so it's the base. Now, we want to find the particle on the other side of the equation that is similar by, uh, by just a single hydrogen particle. So, so you'll notice that HIO3 and IO3 one minus are different simply by one hydrogen particle. So we call that the acid-base conjugate partnership. Similar to the other, this, in this equilibrium, water is accepting a proton. So it's going to be a weak base, and its conjugate acid partner on the other side is the hydronium ion. So now with the strong acids, and there are only seven strong acids we've learned about in past lessons, the um, it, it's a not an equilibrium. It's a, a reaction that goes to completion, and the product produced from hydrochloric acid uh, when it's put in water is chloride ion. If I had 100 HCl particles in a solution of water, in fact, there would be no HCl particles left. They would all exist as chloride ions and hydronium ions. So what that means is the chloride ion must have a fairly weak hold on its hydrogen. And that's the conjugate base. So it's a poor proton acceptor because of that weaker force of attraction within the HCl molecule. So again, we can see the difference here when we write a strong acid is we simply use a single arrow because the reaction goes to completion. And the, uh, <clears throat> again, the KAKB values are shown here for weak acids and weak bases. Now, when a weak base is placed in water, again, we form a uh, an equilibrium expression, you can see that the NH3, the ammonia, is uh, accepting uh, hydrogen from water, so it's acting like a base, and water is acting like an acid. So if the NH3 is a base, its conjugate acid partner on the other side is ammonium ion. And ammonium ion, in this case, if I'm looking at the uh, equilibrium going in the other direction, the ammonium ion is the proton donor. It's donating to hydroxide ion. So hydroxide ion accepting that proton is the proton acceptor, it's a base. So to take a look at why this happens, again, if you look at a Lewis structure for ammonia, you will see nitrogen has five valence shell electrons and three of them are being used to share electron pairs with hydrogen atoms that each have one electron. So each of these bonds really it consists of an electron from the nitrogen and an electron from the hydrogen. And that electron sharing, of course, is uh, unequal. Now, this electron pair is not being shared with anything, so that if a water molecule happens to bump into this particle at the right angle um, with the right velocity, then a hydrogen atom will sometimes be exchanged. So a water molecule can lose its hydrogen atom, and again, it's being the proton donor, so it's regarded as the acid, the ammonia molecule is accepting that proton. It's acting like the base. So when I look at the uh, NH3, I can see that its uh, conjugate partner on the other side is NH4 one plus. So in visualizing this equilibrium happening in the opposite direction, I can see the ammonium ion, if it bumps into a hydroxide ion, these electron pairs are all highly negative and the, elect, the sharing of the electron pair between the nitrogen and the hydrogen is unequal. Nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. Nitrogen has an electronegativity of about, of about 3.04. Hydrogen is 2.20. So because of the uh, differential sharing of the electron pair and the electron spending more time around the nitrogen, that electron 
uh, from the hydrogen tends to spend more time around the nitrogen. This hydrogen becomes vulnerable. And when it does bump into an OH1 minus ion at the right angle with the right velocity, occasionally its proton will be transferred, leaving the electron <coughs> behind, as we see here. So remember that only the, uh, the, the proton of the hydrogen is being transferred. Its electron stays behind. So, so we can write a KB expression or equilibrium constant for the base by multiplying the ammonium concentration times the hydroxide concentration, dividing it by the uh, ammonia concentration. And again, we leave the water out because its activity is one. Now, let's look at the relationship between the Ka and Kb for conjugate acid-base partnerships. So there is a mathematical relationship, and I'm going to show you where this comes from. The equilibrium constant for water really equals the Ka times the Kb for an acid-base conjugate partnership. So let's look, look at why that happens. So here we have, again, the uh, ammonia equilibrium. And the Kb for ammonia would be the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of ammonium ion divided by the concentration of ammonia. So here it is. And now when we look at the conjugate partner on the other side, the conjugate acid partner of ammonium ion, ammonium ion will, is capable of donating a proton to water. Okay? And when it does, it makes hydronium ion and leaves behind an ammonia. And if I write the Ka for this, because this is a weak acid, I get the concentration of ammonia times the concentration of hydronium divided by the concentration of ammonium ion. And now let's look at what happens when we multiply Ka for ammonium ion and Kb for ammonia. When we do, we will notice that after we simplify and take out, for instance, ammonium ion appears both in the numerator and denominator, ammonia similarly appears in the numerator and the denominator, look at what we end up with. We end up with the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium, and we learn that that is equal to what we call Kw, the equilibrium constant for water, because water is capable of self-ionizing, and that number is temperature dependent. At 25 degrees Celsius, that's 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So, when do we use this? Well, if you are given the Ka for ammonia, then you can calculate the Kb for ammonium ion. So we don't give you two tables. We simply give you either the Ka of the weak acid or the Kb of the weak base. In this case, this is the Kb, sorry, for the weak base. This is a Ka for this weak acid. If I give you one or the other, we can use 1 times 10 to the minus 14, the Kw, to calculate the other one. And you would do that by, if I wanted to find Ka here, I would divide both sides by Kb. So if I wanted to find Ka given the Kb, I would say Ka equals Kw divided by Kb. So fairly useful. <clears throat> now let's look at an example of a problem. So we are going to find the pH and the hydronium ion concentration of a 0.5 mole per liter solution of acetic acid. Also determine the percentage of acetic acid that's actually been dissociated. And you're given the Ka is 1.76 times 10 to the minus five. Now when doing acid-base problems, the first thing I would do is determine whether or not it's a strong acid or a weak acid. Well, if you've memorized the strong acid list of seven, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, perchloric, uh, sulfuric, um, and chloric are the, are the strong acids. So this is not one of them. It's a weak acid. So there's many more weak acids than there are strong acids. And that's why it's useful to remember that list of strong acids. So here we have uh, acetic acid, and it's in an equilibrium. Some of the acetic acid molecules will donate their protons to water to make hydronium and acetate ion. And in this case, the initial concentration is 0 0.50 mole per liter. Again, the symbol I'm going to use for mole per liter is capital M. And we know initially that the concentrations of those two 
are negligible. So what's going to happen in order to reach an equilibrium, some of the acetic acid molecules will donate a proton to water. We don't know how many, so we know it's going to go up by X. Acetate is going to go up by X, and the original number of H C2H3O2 molecules will be decreased by that same amount, X. So that at equilibrium, the concentration of uh, HC2H3O2 will be 0 0.50 molar minus X. Similarly, the concentration of hydronium will go up by X, as will the concentration of acetate. Now, there's a, in order to simplify this, there's a simple technique to avoid a quadratic equation. Since we know the Ka, we know that the concentration of, uh, of these substances are all related to each other. And if we assume the concentration of X is going to be very small compared to the original concentration of the acetic acid, we can avoid a quadratic equation. So we're going to assume X is negligible when subtracted from the original concentration. Now, it's not negligible here because there wasn't any of this present. So even though it's really small, it is significant because it's the only amount that's there. So that quantity we're going to assume is negative, and that allows us to, is negligible, sorry. So now that enables us to solve fairly simply. The Ka, 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5, of course, being an equilibrium, is going to equal a concentration of hydronium ion times a concentration of acetate ion divided by the concentration of acetic acid. So when we substitute our values in, this is x, this is x, this is 0 0.50 molar minus x. Assuming this is negligible here, we can now simply solve by saying x squared equals the Ka times 0.5 molar. Now we want to find x, so we take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is x. And in this case, we're going to take the square root of the product of the Ka and the original concentration. And we end up with a value of 3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Now the question asks to find the pH. Well, from a previous lesson, you should remember that the pH is a minus log of the concentration of hydronium. At equilibrium, we can see the concentration of hydronium is x. So we simply have to find the minus log of x. And uh, we can also, at the same time, once we solve for x, which we did, we can see if it is negligible. So let's go back and take the original concentration of 0 0.50 and subtract x, which is 3 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0 0.0030. When we subtract x from the original concentration, we see its value is 0.497. But let's apply the rules for significant digits. We were given two significant digits here and three significant digits here. So when we apply the rules, we simply say, if I apply the rule for 0.497, I see the number here, 0.49, rounds off to 0 0.50, the two significant digits. So because this was only given the two significant digits, the number of significant digits in the answer will only be two significant digits. So we can see, indeed, our assumption was correct. We avoided the quadratic equation and solved, and we got an answer that is certainly acceptable. X is negligible. So again, now to find the pH, we're going to take the minus log of the hydronium ion concentration, 3 times 10 to the minus 3. We're taking a minus value of that. So it was minus 2.53. So minus minus is a plus, plus 2.53. And remember, the whole number doesn't count as a significant digit. So the two is not a significant digit. It's simply a placeholder. Again, I'll remind you, just like in this number here for Ka, the minus 5 is not a significant digit. It's simply a placeholder. And there are three significant digits in this number. Well, in a pH, the 2 really is like the negative 5 in the Ka. It is simply a placeholder. It does not count as a significant digit. So now the percent dissociation is going to equal the amount that dissociated divided by the original amount that was present. You were given 0.50 moles per liter at the start. 
before this system kicked in. And X represents the amount of hydronium ion that was produced from the ionization of the acetic acid molecules. So the percent dissociation will be X divided by the original amount. Because it's a percent, we multiply it by 100. And we end up with 0.59%. So a fairly small number of acetic acid molecules actually donated their protons to water, less than 1% of them. So now let's look at a second example here. So now we're going to deal with a, uh, an aqueous ammonia solution. So notice we are given the Ka for ammonia. So ammonia, however, is, is uh, in this case, it's acting like a base. You can see that ammonia, because of that uh, pair of electrons that are attractive on the nitrogen atom, as we saw previously, the uh, unshared pair of electrons is, if it bumps into a water molecule, in some cases, the water will leave its proton behind. And when it does, it makes hydroxide ion. So in this case, uh, the initial quantity of ammonia um, was given as two moles per liter. Those two quantities are negligible before the equilibrium kicks in. And then when the equilibrium uh, is achieved, what happens is some of the ammonia molecules accept protons from water. So when they do, they are going to go down by an unknown amount. These two will both go up. And at equilibrium, we're going to have two molar minus X being the concentration of ammonia. The ammonium ion will be X and the hydroxide ion will be X. Now, again, we're going to assume X is negligible and check it at the end because it makes it easier. We don't, don't have to use a quadratic equation. So in this case, though, you were given the Ka. So be very careful. Ammonia is a base. So we have to figure out the Kb given the conjugate acid partner. So this is the conjugate acid partner. This is the conjugate base partner. So there's the, the Ka and the Kb of these two equals Kw, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So we can find the Kb of ammonia given the Ka of ammonium ion. So be careful now, again, uh, when you're given these problems. So Kb is going to equal Kw divided by Ka. So if we take the 1 times 10 to the minus 14 Kw divided by the K given Ka, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10, we end up with the Kb for ammonia. Now we can solve our problem. So the Kb is the concentration of ammonium ion times concentration of hydroxide divided by the concentration of ammonia. And we know it's at equilibrium, those quantities will be X. The quantity of ammonia will be two molar. We're going to assume again this amount that ionized is negligible because it is a small number. So it equals 1.79 times 10 to the minus 5, which was the Kb we calculated from the Ka and Kw. So now we can solve for x. So x, uh, because we know x squared equals the product of these two, x equals the square root of that product. And we can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. Now you're asked to find pOH and pH from X. We can calculate the pOH, which is the minus log of the concentration of hydroxide ion, and we get 2.22. So is there a simple way we can now find pH? Well, yes, the relationship between pH and pOH in an acid-base equilibrium is, of course, uh, 14. So we know the pH is going to be 14 take away pOH. So 14 take away 2.22 is 11.78. And again, significant digits. The, the quantities given in the question, this was two significant digits. The Ka was two significant digits. And the pH, the whole number doesn't count as significant digits, only the decimal. The answer is 11.78 for the pH. And we've answered our question here. And the concentration of hydronium ion, if we wanted to, uh, oh, sorry, yes, you were asked to calculate it. So again, applying uh, the formula, if we take the uh, formula for hydronium ion is equal to 10 to the minus pH. And so if we take 10 
to the minus 11.78, you end up with a concentration of hydronium of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. And at the very end, we can say, okay, was X negligible? We knew X was 6 times 10 to the minus 3. Let's subtract it from 2.0. And again, we can see to two significant digits, this number rounds to 2. And in, we see that X was negligible. Now, weak acids are easily identified typically because they usually start with an H in the formula. Like for instance, this acid here is iodic acid, HiO3. So obviously the force of attraction within this particle is, is uh, moderately strong because not very many of these HiO3 molecules in aqueous media will actually give up their hydrogen. So that means that the IO3-1- minus has a relatively strong attraction for a hydrogen atom. That will become important in the next lecture. Now, any acid, this is not one of those seven strong acids that we have memorized. So we know it's got to be a weak acid. So many weak acids are, in fact, organic acids that we'll learn about in the organic unit. But for instance, this particular acid, butyric acid, also called butanoic acid, if we're using a standardized system for naming it, it's got four carbons. It has a carboxyl functional group, which is which is present for all organic acids. So we see here, here's a diagram of, uh, of butanoic acid or butyric acid. We can see there's a functional group here, a carbon atom. The black are the carbon atoms, the white are the hydrogen atoms. So we see the functional group here for the organic acid is a C double bond OOH, characteristic of all organic acids. What varies, of course, are the number of carbon atoms. And of course, we can also add other functional groups on here and it still remains an acid. So do you see which hydrogen is responsible for the acidic nature? Well, what I'm gonna do now is discuss again the electronegativity values of the various atoms. Carbon's electronegativity value is smaller than oxygen's. Carbon's electronegativity value is 2.55, oxygen's is 3.44, so the sharing of these electron pairs is much more equal between carbon and hydrogen. That means this bond here is a little stronger. In the case of this OH bond right here, however, the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen is much greater. The electron pair tends to spend way more time around the oxygen atom. So that makes this particular hydrogen vulnerable. If a water molecule bumps into that at the right angle, at the right speed, it can in fact remove that hydrogen atom in some cases. So maybe 1% of the butanoic acid molecules will actually donate hydrogens in an aqueous medium. Now this C double bond O bond is too strong. Waters can bump into this um, particle. Of course, there's no hydrogen there to, uh, to, uh, to be donated anyway. So. The hydrogen atom that's going to be donated will be this hydrogen atom. These will not be donated. So again, there's a functional group for this organic acid. Now, let's answer a few questions here. How many hydrogen atoms are found in this molecule? Well, we can see there's, there's three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of them. And how many of these hydrogen atoms are involved in carbon-hydrogen bonds? Well, these three, these two, these two, there's seven of them. So these particular hydrogen atoms, as I've said, don't uh, donate their hydrogens. The, this relationship here, these hydrogens, this hydrogen is the only one that can possibly be donated when it collides with water molecules. <clears throat> now we say that butyric acid is monoprotic because it only has a single proton that is donated. All the other ones cannot be donated. Now, weak bases, you have a little bit more difficulty identifying weak bases. They don't have the hydrogen atom written in the formula. 
They don't always have hydroxide ion. A lot of people identify bases by the presence of hydroxide, but a lot of weak bases don't, ha don't have hydroxide ion. So uh, how do we identify them? Well, if we take a look here, here's an example of a weak base. Here's another example of a weak base. And here are some more weak bases. Can you notice something that's common to each one of these? I'm hoping you can see that they all have nitrogen atoms. So the presence of that nitrogen atom, which is fairly electronegative, and nitrogen having five uh, valence shell electrons, so three of them are involved in sharing electrons with hydrogen atoms in ammonia's case. One pair of electrons is unshared. Again, that's a fairly strong negative charge. If water molecules bump into that, they can, in fact, sometimes donate protons. Similarly, in this NH2 group, um, there's going to be a pair of electrons like this that are available, and they have a strong attractive force for protons on water molecules. So the nitrogen atom is what's common in this case, and we can see it here in this equilibria involving conjugate acid-based partners. Here you have the nitrogen atom in blue, its electron pair, the negative charge will pull on this hydrogen from water and remove it. And you can see when it's removed, the electron pair stays behind. The, the hydrogen atom from the water ends up on, uh, bonded to the nitrogen, forming an NH3 group that has a positive charge now because the proton was transferred without its electron. The electron was left behind. So when the electron was left behind, it creates a minus, a negative ion, and a positive ion, making this a weak electrolyte. Why is it weak? Because not all of these base particles actually accept protons. Only a small percentage of them do, which makes them weak bases. <laughs> now, this is the uh, equilibrium shown for uh, methylamine, or the IUPAC name for it is amino methane. There it is. And there is that lone pair of electrons we talked about that has the negative charge. Now, polyprotic acids. Uh, usually when you see poly, it means more than one in, in the context of chemistry. And to this point, the weak monoprotic acids we've discussed have all been monoprotics, which means they only have one proton available for being donated. But in fact, there are uh, substances that have multiple hydrogens available to be donated. In this case, acetic acid only has one. It's monoprotic. We talked about how these hydrogens are bonded to carbon atoms. The electronegativity difference is not great enough to make that hydrogen vulnerable. So only the first one is the one that is donated. It's because it's attached to an oxygen atom. With a much bigger electronegativity difference, the hydrogen can be stolen. So here it is here. There's the hydrogen that can be donated. These will never be donated. So pointing out which uh, hydrogen makes this acidic. And because not all of these molecules in aqueous media donate their protons, we say it's weak. And it's a weak monoprotic acid because only one hydrogen is available. Now. Let's take a look at uh, um, some polyprotic acids. So in, if I look at this particular structure here, we can see that here's uh, an oxygen, the red are oxygens, the whites are hydrogens. We can see, in fact, it looks like there's a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and a hydrogen here that are all available to be donated. So this one has three hydrogens available to be donated. Again, because of the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen, um, the hydrogens can be stolen by water molecules bumping into them. So the central, in this case, the central atom is, pho is phosphorus. So this is what we call phosphoric acid, which is a weak acid found in Coca-Cola and other um, cola drinks. So I know that phosphoric acid is, is a, a fairly good solvent in coca-cola when working one time at a factory in cornwall i was working with a with a uh, pipe fitter and we were trying to get a flange off a large uh, tank and we couldn't get it off because they were rusted 
So he asked me to go and get him a Coke. And I thought he just wanted a, a break and wanted a Coke. But in fact, he wanted the Coke to pour onto the rusted bolts that we couldn't get off. And lo and behold, we left and came back 10 minutes later and the bolts came off with ease because the, the solubility of the rust in the phosphoric acid, it's a fairly useful solvent. So now all polyprotic acids like phosphoric acid have multiple numbers of hydrogens. In this case, sulfuric acid um, is a polyprotic acid, but the first proton donation is a strong acid. The second proton donation comes from a weak acid. So another uh, polyprotic acid would be carbonic acid, H2CO3. That's formed when carbon dioxide reacts with water in the atmosphere. So here's a list of some of the more common polyprotic acids. We have hydrosulfuric acid. And again, notice that the uh, donations happen in steps. And always the first step has a slightly bigger Ka in this case than the second step. And carbonic acid, you can see again, it's got two hydrogens to donate. The Ka of the second donation is a little weaker than the Ka of the first donation. Phosphoric is H3PO4. It's got three hydrogens to be donated. Sulfurous acid. And of course, we mentioned sulfuric acid, which is only the second proton donation that is actually weak. So now we're gonna look at a typical polyprotic acid, phosphoric acid. So, so here's the first donation. H3PO4 donates a proton to water and it makes H2PO4 one minus and hydronium ion. Now, of course, this is in solution and it will be involved in another equilibrium. So, so now the H2PO4 one minus dihydrogen phosphate ion can donate a proton to another water molecule forming another hydronium. And in this case, now it's forming an HPO4 two minus ion. This HPO4 two minus is also capable of donating a proton. So we have a fairly complex mixture here with H3PO4 molecules, H2PO4 one minus, HPO4 two minus, and PO4 three minus ions are all present in this complex equilibrium. And each one has a different Ka value. And notice as the donations happen, the, uh, the probability gets smaller and smaller for donations. So let's take a look uh, on a more detailed level here. So what's happening? So here we have our first H3PO4 phosphoric acid molecule. It donates to water. It forms the ion H2PO4 one minus and hydronium ion. Now the probability of this colliding with a water molecule to donate a proton is greater than this particle simply because there's more hydrogens available and the more probability because more hydrogens are available for donation. Now this particle H2PO4 one minus is in an equilibrium as well, but the probability, now we've reduced the probability significantly because there's no longer a hydrogen here to be donated. So when it collides with water, lower probability of collision uh, resulting in a donation of a proton to make the HPO4 two minus ion, and also HPO4 two minus ion is in an equilibrium. And now again, the probability is much lower still than the H2PO4 one minus, the HPO4 two minus ion, because there's only one hydrogen available to be donated lower probability. So again, these are all the steps happening. When you have a phosphoric acid mixture, you've got all of these ions present. You've got hydronium ions, of course, being produced and you've got some of the original molecule present because it is a weak acid. Not If we had 100 of them, you might only have three or four that actually create this ion. So you'd have to use larger numbers to uh, illustrate how many of each of these would be present in solution. But the largest concentration would be H3PO4 in a solution of phosphoric acid, followed by the concentration of H2PO4 one minus, 
then smaller amounts of HPO4 2 minus, and then still smaller amounts of PO4 3 minus phosphate ion. So, now let's take a look at a problem uh, involving phosphoric acid. So, we have a three mole per liter solution of phosphoric acid in an equilibrium, and there is the first step. So, the first step. You can see the original concentration is three moles per liter, negligible amounts of those two, and phosphoric acid will go down by X. These will go up by X. So at equilibrium, this will be three minus X. These will both be X. And of course, we're gonna assume the amount that uh, dissociates is negligible. So the Ka is given for this as 7.1 times 10 to the minus three, it's going to equal the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of H2PO4 1 minus divided by the concentration of H3PO4. We know those to be X at equilibrium, this to be 3 molar. So now we can solve for X by saying X squared equals 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 3.0 molar. So X is the square root of 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 3 molar. So now the second step. H2PO4-1- minus will be in an equilibrium. There are the products. I'm going to quickly go through again. The concentration of hydronium, remember, was, was uh, from the phosphoric acid equilibrium. So at equilibrium, it would be 0.14 minus X. This will be 0.14 because X is going to be a small amount. This will be X here. In that case, it's negligible again. So the second Ka is 6.3 times 10 to the minus eight. Notice it's smaller, probability is lower. So it's gonna equal the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of HPO4 two minus divided by the concentration of H2PO4 minus, which we calculated previously. So 0.14 times X divided by 0.14. <clears throat> and we can now solve X is 6.3 times 10 to the minus eight because the 0.14 is cancel. And the third step, HPO4 two minus donates to water molecules again, forming this equilibrium. Concentration of HPO4 two minus is 6.3 times 10 to the minus eight. That was uh, calculated previously. And again, this is going to go down by X. This will go up by X. So at equilibrium, we're going to assume this X to be negligible. So we get a Ka3 of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13 equals 0.14 times X divided by 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. And we can solve again by... <clears throat> 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13 times 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8 equals X times 0.14. So we divide by 0.14 and we arrive at the concentration for phosphate. So, which is X. So now we know the concentration of hydronium is about 0.14. Concentration of H2PO4 1 minus is 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration of HPO4 2 minus is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. Concentration of phosphate is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 19. So again, what we were saying has been demonstrated here. As you go through the various proton donations, the concentrations are lower because the probabilities of donation are lower. So now the pH is the minus log of the concentration of hydronium. So it's a minus log of 0.14. So it's going to be 0.85. And again, two significant digits given here, two significant digits. Now let's look at sulfuric acid. Uh, most polyprotic acids are weak, but sulfuric acid is one of the is the only one that actually the first proton donation is complete. So that reaction goes to completion. The second proton donation for HSO4 1 minus is a weak acid because it does not go to completion. So 
Here we have a question where we're asking you to find the pH and the concentrations of these particular ions in solution. The solution is sulfuric acid, it's 0 0.50 mole per liter. So the first step is notice it's not two arrows because it goes to completion, being a strong acid, one of those seven strong acids. So we have an ICF table because it's not an equilibrium, it's a final endpoint. So all of the 0.5 mole per liter sulfuric acid will dissociate and ionize, making 0.50 mole per liter hydronium ion and 0 0.50 mole per liter hydrogen sulfate ion. So now we have to consider the second equilibrium here, or the first equilibrium, the second reaction. So now notice two arrows because it's a weak acid and we can now solve for the concentration of hydronium ion in this equilibrium. So we know the concentration of HSO4 one minus will be 0 0.50 because this, step, this reaction went to completion. And we know the concentration of hydronium ion was already 0 0.50 molar. That came from the reaction of the H2SO4 initially. So we do know the HSO4 one minus equilibrium will go down by X. These two quantities will go up by X. So that at equilibrium, hydronium ion is gonna be 0 0.50 plus whatever X value occurs as a result of the ionization dissociation of HSO4 one minus. So the concentration at equilibrium for HSO4 one minus will be 0 0.50 minus X. We're gonna assume this value is negligible again, and we can solve. We know the Ka for this second proton donated is 1.1 times 10 to the minus two. So it will be equal to the concentration of sulfate times concentration of hydronium divided by the concentration of HSO4 minus. And that's where these numbers come from, X times this divided by this. Now, in this case, uh, X, I'm sorry, uh, X is not negligible because this Ka value is fairly large. So we can't avoid the quadratic equation in this example. So we're gonna to have to solve using a quadratic formula where X equals, uh, A will be one, B will be 0.511, C will be minus 0 0.0055. And of course for AX squared plus BX plus C, minus uh, X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four, uh, B squared minus four AC. So we can solve for that. I don't show that because you're used to doing that. So solving for X, we get point, uh, 0 0.011. So the concentration of sulfuric acid at the end is zero because this went to completion. The concentration of HSO4 one minus will be 0 0.50 molar plus the amount of X that actually occurred from this second proton donation. So the, um, and the sulfate ion concentration is X. The HSO4 one minus was 0 0.50 minus the amount that's associated here. This is uh, the hydrogen sulfate ion concentration, 0.49. And then hydronium will be the 0.5 added to the amount that was created when the second proton donation occurred. So the pH is the minus log of the hydronium ion concentration. So it's a minus log of 0.51, which is 0 0.30. Now the homework that uh, you're assigned, here it is, it's also in your course pack. And remember, of course, uh, chemistry is not a spectator sport. In order to do well, please, please do these problems. And uh, I'm signing out now. Thank you very much for tuning in.